G'day guys and welcome to this business management lesson. In today's lesson, we're looking at key knowledge point 428. That is unit four, area of study two, and the eighth key knowledge point for this area of study. Today specifically, we're looking at the effect of change on stakeholders. And this key knowledge point helpfully gives us a list of different key knowledge, uh, different stakeholders that we need to be understanding how change can impact. Those include owners, managers, employees, customers, suppliers, and the general community which is not a stakeholder we've spoken about previously. But I'll draw your attention to the fact that this key knowledge point uses the word including. So if you can think of any other stakeholders that might be impacted by change for a given scenario, you're welcome to talk about those in an assessment task. Now, when it comes to the effects of change on a stakeholder, you got to remember that stakeholders are those individuals that have a vested interest in a business. That means for whatever reason, they care about the success or failure of that business. And when it comes to the effect of change on stakeholders, change can have all kinds of different effects on all kinds of different groups of people. Some change will have positive effects on employees. Some change will have negative effects on customers. Some change will have absolutely no effect on the owners of a business. Everything, as far as this key knowledge point is concerned, I'm afraid, comes down to context. And it's most likely that this key knowledge point will always be assessed uh, with a case study of some kind, because unless you're told what the specific change is and what the relationship is of the stakeholders to that change, you can't possibly be expected to describe how a change is going to impact a stakeholder. Going through the list of stakeholders listed in this key knowledge point, we begin with managers. And managers are the people who make decisions for business. Typically, they're the ones making plans, implementing strategies, etc. It's likely that they are the ones deciding on the changes that are necessary and implementing them. As far as change is concerned, as managers can be impacted by all kinds of different changes. And as we go through this key knowledge point, I'll give you some examples that can be applied. But once again, I'll reiterate that this key knowledge point is likely to be assessed given the context of a case study. So perhaps in a case study, managers uh, take on more responsibility. They have two teams of employees who are brought together and the manager now needs to do more. They need to uh, be managing more employees or they need to be making grander plans, whatever it could be. They might need to work harder as a result of a change. Perhaps uh, the change that's being implemented is a change in management style which means that the managers themselves might need to do some training and might need to uh, begin operating in a way that's different, perhaps even unfamiliar from the way they were operating previously. This could cause all sorts of problems. It could lead to complications or it could fix some pre-existing problems. You could require that managers utilize different management skills than they'd be using previously, which once again, you'd expect training to be involved there. Uh, there could be training specifically to develop the manager's ability to use new technologies or the manager could be implementing training for employees to use new technologies. Uh, the performance management processes that the business is using might change, which would mean the managers need to be familiar and prepared to uh, undertake different performance management strategies than they'd been using previously. There might need to be terminations, in which case it would be the managers doing the terminations of the employees. Whatever change happens in a business, it's likely that the managers will be responsible for it and they'll be responsible for the outcomes. So whatever change is proposed, you can describe the impact on managers as being they're the ones who have to facilitate this change. It's up to them whether the change is successfully implemented or not, and they'll have to live with the consequences of the change. So once again, if, if uh, the consequence of the change is that there is more responsibility in the business, that responsibility falls on the manager. If the consequences of a change is that that change created problems, it's the responsibility of the manager to identify and correct those problems, et cetera, et cetera. Employees is a little bit easier to apply. Typically in business, employees are the ones impacted by change and the ones who are responsible for actually carrying out the change. The manager holds the responsibility for the success or failure of the change, but typically it's the employees who have to change what they're doing or change how they act or change how they operate. It's the employees who have to be impacted by the change for the change to be successful. Changes that could occur that would impact on employees. And once again, this is a very limited list of examples, uh, but if there are redundancies, 
uh, or the business is downsizing and there'll be losses of employment. It's the employees who are losing that employment. Uh, if career advancement opportunities become available, then it's the employees who will then have access to those opportunities that might increase their motivation. We know career advancement is a motivation strategy uh, from Unit 3. And certainly we can talk about um, employees upskilling and becoming more qualified as the result of participating in training that's been implemented. You could talk more broadly about impacts on engagement and motivation due to the implementation or the removal of perhaps um, performance-related pay or other incentivized um, different methods. We could talk about employees being impacted um, based on how much authority and how much independence they have when there's a change in management style, for instance. Whatever the change is, it's employees who are going to be impacted because most changes in a business, uh, in a business management context will impact the way and the nature that work is done in that business. And it's always the employees who are doing that work. We can talk about the impacts of change on customers. Now, customers purchase goods and services from businesses, and typically they expect a good quality product or service for a reasonable price. So anytime change impacts the availability, the quality or the um, affordability of outputs, it will impact on customers. If your business becomes uh, more productive and more efficient, so there's a higher uh, supply of products, you can talk about um, being able to satisfy increased demand in the market and satisfy more customers that way. If changes in the business impact the quality of products, so if um, you implement automation to increase the consistency or you implement quality management strategies like quality control and quality assurance, we can talk about how that's going to increase the consistent quality of outputs and that will satisfy customers more consistently because the quality will be higher. And certainly if there are modifications to a recipe or to, uh, to the structure of a product, for example, when the headphone jack was removed from mobile phones as, as normal, that's going to impact on customers too because it will impact on their perception of the quality of the goods they're receiving. Uh, certainly too, businesses might change how a product can be accessed. So if they open an online store or if they start shipping to um, countries they previously didn't ship to, that will impact customers in those markets. So there are all sorts of ways that customers can be impacted, but typically it's to do with um, accessibility of the product or the quality or the price. Um, often internal changes in a business might not have any impact on customers. If there's a restructure, if there's some redundancies, but the products or the outputs don't change at all, if distribution doesn't change at all, if prices don't change at all, then your customers haven't been impacted. Owners of a business are those that have invested time and or effort into a business. Remember that owners of a company are called shareholders. Now, shareholders may or may not be impacted by changes in the business. If those changes uh, impact the profitability of the business, then you might say that the shareholders will be impacted because that will affect their vested interest. Uh, but owners uh, is terminology we tend to use for uh, non-incorporated business, for sole traders and partnerships. And they're typically more involved in the day-to-day -day operations. And so they might be more impacted by changes that occur in the business. Certainly, if a business uh, is able to implement change that increases a competitive advantage and increases the appeal of the business or of the brand, uh, or if a change uh, increases the efficiency or productivity of the business to reduce operating costs, certainly the implementation of something like lean management um, would impact the profitability of the business um, by eliminating wastage and reducing the amount of resources a business needs to purchase to operate. Uh, certainly an owner would see that as the business becomes more profitable, the value of their investment would increase and that's how that might impact on owners. And certainly suppliers. They're the businesses that you buy your inputs from and they can be impacted in all sorts of ways. If we stick with our example of lean management, if you don't need to buy as many inputs now because you've eliminated waste from your operations, that means that you're giving your suppliers less business and you'll impact their business by giving them less money. You're buying less things from them. Certainly, it might be that you're looking to implement strategies to increase your corporate social responsibility. And it might be that the supplier you use doesn't have a perfectly transparent supply chain. Uh, maybe their um, ability to meet um, 
or to reflect your business's values um, isn't satisfactory. So you end business with them and seek business with a new supplier, in which case you're going to impact both of those suppliers because as a result, uh, as a result of your change, you'll end business with one and you'll start business with another. That's going to impact on both of them. Certainly, if you do something like um, offshore your production or move your operations overseas, you'll probably end your relationships with your domestic suppliers and start relationships with overseas suppliers. And certainly, if you just look to increase production, you'll have to increase your order of inputs from somewhere, and that too will impact on your suppliers. It may be that the impact is that you're generating more business for suppliers. It may be that you're asking too much of your suppliers and you actually have to end business with one supplier because they can't provide the inputs that you need in the quantities that you need or in the timeline that you need. Whatever the change is, if it's going to impact the amount of inputs that you need to run your business, whether that's a reduction in inputs or an increase in inputs, that will impact on your suppliers. And finally, the general community. If we consider that the general community includes the people around your business, the businesses that operate in the same market, the families of employees, uh, the people who walk past your business, the people who uh, exist in the same suburb or in the same city as your business, then your business will have an impact on these stakeholders just because of their proximity to your business. And change in your business might change the lives for those stakeholders. For instance, if you do make a bunch of redundancies in your business, then you have to consider that the children of your employees and the wives and husbands of your employees are certain, suddenly going to be living in households where unemployment has just increased and um, the consistency of access to salaries and to remuneration has decreased. And that will have an impact on those families. Uh, if you expand your business to a new location or a new market, you'll be providing an opportunity for individuals in that market, in that location, to purchase goods or services that theoretically they didn't have access to previously. Uh, if your business implements lean management and is no longer buying as much from suppliers, you can expect that your business will be creating less waste. And that means that perhaps you're not filling up your bins and you're actually contributing less wastage to local, uh, local municipal dumps or whoever, however your bins get collected in this area, you're creating less waste that needs to be dealt with by the local community. Uh, it might be that you're able to um, provide sponsorship opportunities uh, and funding for local primary school fates. I love going into a butcher's or a cafe and seeing the certificates of thanks on the wall whenever you can see that that small business is heavily involved in their local community sponsoring primary school fates. I always think that's great. Uh, definitely businesses that look to uh, reduce their operating costs uh, by making changes can be expected that those changes will have an impact on the general community where we're reducing waste or increasing waste or reducing or increasing employment. And certainly too, the general community is going to include your customers or at least individuals in the market who could be your customers. And so any change you make to do with production might, uh, if you can increase your output, might give the general community greater access to your products. And if you decrease production, will give the general community less access to your products. In summary for this key knowledge point, it's a tricky one because once again, this is almost impossible to discuss without the context of a case study. Any change is going to impact on some stakeholders. Those impacts might be positive, they might be negative, there might not be any impacts at all. Knowing what kind of change you're talking about is important to be able to discuss this and knowing what kind of stakeholders uh, could be affected uh, is going to be important for you to be able to address this key knowledge point. Certainly, you need to be aware that managers, employees, customers, suppliers, and the general community can all be impacted by business change. And it's up to you to be able to work out when you're presented with an example of change, which of those stakeholders has been affected and how they've been affected. That's all for today. See you next time.